Did you meet him? I never met him. I don't know who he is. We believe you, dear. But you must tell us everything so we can help you. Oh, there, there, darling. Don't you worry. We'll get you out. Your lawyer to see you. Lawyer? I haven't any lawyer. The state provides one. Come on. There are two trays of uncut diamonds still missing. Now, if you're shielding someone, I advise you to come clean because it'll help your case. I don't know anything about them. Who is this girl, this Miss Blair? I don't know who she is. I never saw her before. But the jewelry was found in both your pockets. I don't know how it got there. It won't be easy to make a judge believe that. Want to get in touch with anyone? I don't know anyone to get in touch with. I've only been here two days. Hmm. Would you like to notify your folks? I have no need to notify. I see. Sparkler in? Yeah. Well, did you enjoy the trial, boys? No. What's stiff. You got a hand at the DA, though, Sparkler. He sure laid it all heavy. Yeah. If I hadn't known that we did the job, I'd have sworn them kids was guilty. Long rap? No. Soft-hearted judge. First offense, only two years. Who were they? I don't know. Boy said he was a stranger in town. Girl, some kid worked in the five and dime. Well, we better start to unload. Yeah. cellmate in pretty near every jug in America. But you're the tightest mouthed guy I ever met. You ain't opened your trap in the 18 months you've been here. Sorry, Danny, if I haven't been good company. Ah, it ain't that. Only always a guy tells his bunkmate that he's in for doing nothing. Was framed, you know. I guess that is the usual story, isn't it? Well, Danny, I was framed. <laughs> I noticed. It had to come out sometime. <laughs> come on, kid. Get it off your chest to make you feel better. Come on, tell me about it. Well, I was walking down the avenue after trying to get a job one day. I stopped to look in a jewelry store window. I brought your clothes. You're leaving us tomorrow, you know. Thank you. Hope they're taking good care of mine. I'll be needing them in seven years. Pretty excited, huh, kid? Why shouldn't I be? I've been waiting for this 18 months. 18 months? Say, I could do that standing on my ear. I wonder how it's going to look. Well, slip it on and let's see. I understand the best-dressed women on the Riviera are wearing them short this season with kick pleats. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? Oh, I'll keep you the rest of it. After the brick went through the window, you and the dame was found with some of the jewelry on you. Yeah, how did you know? I know how the sparkler works. Who's that? He's been doing that same phony stunt for years. I did an odd job or two for myself after I left the Red Mike outfit. Sparkler, huh? Hey, look, kid. I know just what you're thinking. Forget it. You got a rap and got off easy. The sparkler's plenty tough. 
You'll never pin anything on him. Lots of guys have tried it. Pipe down in there. Look swell. You're a credit to the old alma mater. Thanks. I wish I could do something for you. You can. Tell the warden to renew my subscription for the fashion magazine. You know, a girl in my position has got to keep up with the styles. <laughs> Here's the money you earned during your stay here. You've both been model prisoners. And you paid your debt to society according to the laws of the state. You are young. And you have a chance to redeem yourselves. Try and make the most of it. Go straight. And above all, keep out of bad company. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, I owe you an apology. An apology? Yes, when this thing happened to us, I thought that you were... I guess you thought the same thing about me. I still can't figure it out. Neither could I until Danny told me how it happened. Danny? Danny Hinkle, my cellmate. He told me just how we were framed. But how? Well, he explained to me that... Good luck. Thanks. Goodbye. Uh, have you decided where you're going? Uh, I guess I'll go to YMCA for the time being. Oh, Chief. Yeah, sir? Is there YMCA around here? Uh, uh, there's lots of branches around, I guess. But the nearest one's on 23rd Street. That is, if they ain't done move since the last time I seen it about eight years ago. But anyhow, you can try, and if it ain't there, you find another one around someplace. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah, but you welcome. Wasn't very definite, was he? Better try a phone book. Don't worry, I will. Well, goodbye again. Goodbye. How are you? Fine, Dad. And so happy to be back home. May. Oh, it's good to see you. Hello, Bonnie. I expected you at the station. Didn't you get my telegram? I got it too late. Oh. You're looking wonderful. Are you working? Uh-huh. I'll get you a bite to eat, Bonnie. You must be starved. All right, Mother. Come on, May. Tell me everything that's happened since I've been away. Gee, it's great to be in this room again. And to have my own clothes to wear. I wonder how they'll fit. Why, what's happened to... I packed them for you this morning. Packed? Yes, you see, I don't share your enthusiasm about coming back. What do you mean? Don't you think you brought enough disgrace on us? But me? Your coming back will spoil my chances of getting married. My boyfriend doesn't know I have a sister that's been to prison, and I'm going to see that he doesn't find out. Then you... you believe that I was guilty? Well, what difference does that make? You couldn't make the judge believe you weren't. I see. Maybe you're right. Perhaps it would be better if I didn't stay here. Oh, now look, sis. I don't want you to think I'm hard, but, but you understand. Yes, I understand. Oh, I wore out a couple of your dresses while you were away. I knew you wouldn't mind, and they'd be out of style anyway. Yes, I guess the styles did change while I was away. Time changes a lot of things. Come on, Bonnie. All right, Mother. 
Just a cold beef sandwich and a cup of hot coffee. Sit there. Nice having you home, Bonnie. Nice to be home, Dad. But I'm afraid I can't stay. I'm leaving tonight. Leaving tonight? But why? I have a job to go to upstate and must report in the morning. The matron got it for me. They try to get people placed before they leave. You know, sort of social welfare work they do. But what's the matter with getting your old job back again so you can stay home? Yes. My being here would remind neighbors and friends about... Well, you know neighbors, they will talk. Friends will too, for that matter. But must you leave tonight? Can't you notify them that you'll take the position after you've had a rest? Rest? I've had nothing else for the past 18 months. Well, I must hurry. May dear, help Bonnie pack her clothes. May's going to be so disappointed. Yes, I know. Tonight, if it's ready. Oh, it's ready. I don't waste no time here. The last girl that had it, her rent was due this morning. She couldn't pay. Out she went. Ah, oh, but she'll like it here. You know, I always try to make my roomies as comfortable as they'd be in their own homes. I'm like a mother to them. This way, please. There you are. Look. How do you like it? Hot and cold water? And this here stall is the best I have in the house. I think it's nice. I'll take it. Here's ten dollars. Well, thank you. And as I was saying, this should be more like your own home than a rooming house. You'll find my board is nice and respectable. Of course, I let them have visitors if they want to. But not later than 10 o'clock. There you are. Have a good night's sleep, dearie. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. I shall be glad to call you if anything comes up where no references are required.
Mrs. Abernathy. My rent isn't due, is it? <laughs> My land, no. There's a young man downstairs asking for yes. you. And I was wondering if he wanted to see him. Uh, you see, sometimes some of my young lady rumors don't want to see Carlos. Yes, so, but so I always try to make sure. He says his name is Henderson. Oh, but he's a nice-looking young man, too. <laughs> yes, have him come right up. He's a friend of mine. Uh, uh, that coffee pot holding two cups comes in handy, don't it? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Right up, Mr. Henderson. Thank you. Pardon me. Mind you, I'm not the kind to talk about me rumors. Hmm? But Miss Blair seems awfully anxious to see you. Thanks. Hello. Hello. Told you I'd be right on time. The chef was delayed a little. Oh. Sit down, I'll tell you all about it. I started out this morning determined to get a job. And just when I was ready to give up, I ran into a girl that I used to work with at five and ten. Fortunately, she didn't know where I've been. And when I told her I was looking for work, come with me, she says. I'm working at Lanning's, and the man who does the hiring is a personal friend of mine. And he'll give you a job, or else. And? So that's why the chef was late. Yeah, but what about the job? Oh, well, the job. I got the job. I start in the morning, the remnant counter in the basement. Oh, swell. Did you have any luck? No, same old story. Where have you worked before? Have you any references? I know the questions before they even ask them. I know. But right now, let's partake of the choicest delicacies of the season. Come on, I'm hungry. You sit there. Thanks. Hmm. It's been lonesome dining alone. You're doing me a favor. Now, let's see. What's on the menu tonight? Caviar? Mm. Long Island duck? Ah, nice. And sweetbreads. Mm. Bye. What? No beans? Oh, my goodness, the beans. Ouch! What's the matter? It's hot. Here, let me do it. Here we are. Got a can opener? Have I? It's been my constant companion for the past few weeks. It must be great to be able to go nice places. Order what you want without having to look at the other side of the menu for the prices. Must be nice to be rich. Wouldn't make the beans taste any better. Oh, I don't know. I talked to a fellow today who could have given me a job. Yes? Well, before he had a chance to ask, I told him I had no references. He said to see him in a day or two, he'd think things over, you know, just letting me down easy. You'd think if somebody really wanted to work, they could get the opportunity. It's beginning to get me down. Don't be like that. Look at me. I felt the same way, too. Yet tomorrow I start on my career in the basement. Eighteen dollars a week. Why, in three weeks I'll practically be a millionaire. Thank you. What you doing tonight, Barney? Same as usual. Why don't you get wise to yourself? Wasting your time on a fellow that can't do nothing for you? Can't do nothing for himself, as far as that goes. Were you ever in love, Piggy? Yeah. Not so much I didn't go out with another fellow if he could show me a good time. That Michael in the hardware is a swell guy. He's been trying to date you up for the last seven weeks. Why don't you give him a break? I'm not interested. You don't have to be interested. Just have a good time. He's giving a birthday party tonight, and he's going to ask you to go. Now, don't be a fill. You go. He's coming over now to ask you. Make out like you don't know nothing about it. Hello, Bonnie. Hello. Say, if you're not doing anything tonight, I'm showing a little birthday party over at the Pekin Cafe, and I'd like to have you come along. No presents. I'm sorry, Michael, but I have a previous date. Well, can't you break it? No, I can't. Well, why don't you bring him along with you? Oh, I couldn't do that. That would be imposing on you. No, it wouldn't. At least that way I can have a couple of dances with you. I'll ask him. Make him come with you. 
I'll try, and thank you, Michael. I'll be seeing you tonight. Did you have a tough day? No, just a couple of cranky customers who didn't realize that remnants are remnants. But I feel fine. Where are you going? I found a new place to eat. Sorry, not tonight. I'm stepping out. Stepping out? Yes, one of the boys in the hardware department is having a birthday party and invited a few of us for dinner and dancing. Oh. All right, I'll take you home so you can change. But you're coming, too. Well, I don't know the people. I wasn't invited. You've just been invited. All the girls were told to bring their best boyfriends. And as you're the best I have, you're the one I'm bringing. No, I don't think I should go. Now, darling, just for tonight, stop thinking and come on. talking to somebody you like. You talk and he talks and both of you learn something. I'm glad you came. You shouldn't be neglecting Maisie like this. Oh, she talks too much. a girl that ought to get married. So I said, when I find the right man, I will. But it's no use a girl throwing away a young life on a man what can't provide for her. And so he said, Maisie, wouldn't you like to powder your nose? Sure. Thanks for a lovely talk. I never saw you with this crowd before. You work at Lanning's, too? Yeah. I haven't got a steady job. What sort of work do you do? Anything I can get. Say, do you know anything about soda jerking? A little. Well, look, the guy that runs around with my sister is manager of the place where I work. He's short a man. Come around in the morning. I'll get him to put you on. You think he will? Oh, I'm pretty sure he will, yeah. Well, well, where is it? How do I get there? Well, uh, that's the place. I can get there about 9. You drop around about 10, and that'll give me a chance to talk to him first. Thanks. I'll be there. OK. Which means in English, a happy birthday to Mr. Michael Martin. Aren't you? That's why I thought to myself, 
They'd be so happy in that front parlor. Just think it over. Thanks, I will. Hello, Bonnie. Did you want me? Hurry and dress. We're going out to dinner. Found a swell new restaurant where we can dance. It's better than swell. It's cheap. All right. I'll be dressed in a few minutes. Come down when you're ready. I have something to show you. OK. May I come in? May I come in? Silly. Been buying something for me again? No, it's just a carton of cigarettes that we're gonna mail to Danny. Have you heard from him? Yeah, I got a letter this morning. Says he gets out soon. Good. Come see what I got today. Ah, oh, parrots. Lovebird, stupid. Men and wife? I said lovebirds. That's Elmer and Cynthia. What do you say, Elmer? Hey, take care of Cynthia while we're gone, will you? Well, you got your dancing shoes on? My very best. And don't you step all over them. to what we was talking about this afternoon. Not yet, you see, I was gonna... Miss Abernathy was saying the elegant front parlor's still vacant. Well? Well, she said that when we decided to get married, that it'd make very comfortable quarters for us. Oh, but I... Well, come and see it. you love it. Isn't it just too elegant? It's lovely. I leave you alone. You can look around and make your plans. And you'll find by taking this place, two can live almost as cheap as one. Oh, and before you leave, don't forget to turn out the light. for us to get married. Not half as anxious as I am. Is this a proposal? It is if you say yes. Mr. Henderson, are you in a position to support me in the manner to which I'm accustomed? Well, you'll have to do without a few luxuries, Miss Blair, such as chauffeur, personal maid, and some trifles like that. Oh, but this is so sudden, Mr. Henderson. I must have more time to think it over. Take all the time you want. One, two, time's up. Well, now that we're engaged, I must keep no secrets from you. Fifty dollars? Why, Philip, you've been holding out on me. My wealth is at your disposal. Only your wealth? <laughs> Have you had lunch, Peg? Yeah, I went to the fountain, wanted to see Don. You remember him. He's taking me dancing tonight. Did you see the, uh, Mr. Henderson? Oh, oh uh... No, no, he wasn't there. You must be mistaken. We both left for work at the same time this morning. Well, he isn't there anymore. He isn't there anymore? What are you talking about? Well, I'll tell you, because I think you ought to know, and if you take my advice, you'll never see him again. He's a jailbird, that's what he is. He went to prison for stealing or murdering or something. Don's boss found out and fired him right off. Believe me, you're lucky you're not married to him. Oh, I'll tell you about it later. Could I do something for you? Do you mind waiting on me, miss? Oh, yes. Yes, of course.
dear. Where have you been? Have you had dinner? No, I'm not hungry. Come on up. Let me fix you something. my job, I was fired. The boss found out I served a prison term. I tried to tell him what happened. He laughed at me. I understand, dear. But you'll get another one. Yes, and get thrown out again. I tell you, Bonnie, it's no use. going to rent the elegant front parlor. Plan to get married. Great future we have ahead of us. Got two strikes on us already. where no one knows me. Running away won't help you. See that, Alma? You can't run away from Cynthia. She'll follow you no matter where you go. Lovebirds are that way. Come on, let's have some coffee and then go to a movie. There's a good picture playing at the Star Theater. Heaven, their destination. their destination. Do you like this one? I soaked my feet for three hours last night. My corns are popping like blazers. I have a good mind to go back to my old job. No use, Bill. Won't give your feet a rest. These new efficiency experts are making the elevator boys stand up all day. Peggy? Hmm? Who are those two men standing over there? Are them? They're just store dicks. Detectives. Detectives? Yeah. Mind watching my counter for a few minutes? I want to run upstairs. Well, sure. Go right ahead. Chance. The store detectives must have found out about me, too. How do you know? They stood there staring at me, whispering to each other. But I didn't give them a chance to have me fired. I left, and I'm not going back. <laughs> Last night you wanted me to go on fighting, look for another job. Now you can see how hopeless it is. Suppose we do get other jobs, what then? We'll be living in fear that somebody will find out. I guess you're right. Come on. Let's 
get out of here. Let's go for a walk. Paper. Thank you, ma'am. Latest condition. Another suicide in the Hudson. Latest condition. Another suicide in the Hudson. Won't you come in for a minute? No, thanks. Good night. matter, honey? I heard it fell on the ceiling and I thought, I thought, oh, I'm so glad you're all right. Did you think that I... I was so scared. Look. better. Come on, make me a cup of coffee, will you? You'll find Mr. Henderson's room on the third floor. The second door to the right. Thanks, lady. doing here? Just hit town tonight. I'm leaving in the morning. I thought I'd come up and say hello and goodbye. Danny, this is Bonnie, Miss Blair. Pleased to meet you. How do you do? I was just going to make some coffee. Won't you join us? Sure, lady. But don't put it in a tin cup. Hey, give me your hat, Danny. Thanks. Come on, sit right over here. Thanks. So you leave him in the morning. Where are you going? I got me a job on a farm up in Connecticut. You a farmer? Listen, kid. After what I've been through, and at my age, I like any job, so long as I ain't being watched when I'm doing it. Gee, it'll be great not getting the jitters every time I see a cop. Once you do a stretch, the going's tough. We found that out. Danny, how do you go about wiping out a prison record? With you, it's no cinch. Unless they can catch the guy what framed you and make him confess. That's the only way you can clear yourself. Here's your coffee. Thanks. Sit over there, Danny. Say, remember telling me you knew the guy that framed us? You mean the sparkler? Yeah. What in the world are you talking about? The sparkler, I told you. The fellow that framed us. I wish I could get my hands on him. What's his real name? That's the only name I know him by. Where is he? He works out of Dave's cigar store over on 2nd Avenue between uh, 8th and 9th Street. Why, you ain't thinking of going to see him? Yes. Don't be a sap. He's dynamite. Well, I'll be saying goodbye. I'm going to mosey over to a flop house near the station.
Goodbye, Danny. Good luck. Take good care of him. Don't let him do nothing foolish. I won't. Let us hear from you sometime. Sure. Goodbye. What are you thinking about? Wiping out our prison record. You're not going to the sparkler, are you? But you mustn't dare. It's dangerous. Don't worry. See you in the morning. Good night. Good morning. Oh, hello, dear. Where are you going? I was just going for a walk. I'll go with you. No, what? Well, you see, I have an appointment. Yes, I know. But that appointment concerns me, too, and I'm going with you. Bonnie, you can't go. This is my job. It's as much mine as it is yours. Don't forget to tell him we were with the Red Mike outfit. What's the same? Friend of Danny Hinkle's. Ah. Wait a minute, and I'll see. There's a guy out front to see you, boss. Says he's a friend of Danny Hinkle's. Hinkle? Oh, Danny Hinkle. Send him in. Okay. One in. You want to see me? You the sparkler? Yeah. What can I do for you? We're looking for work. Oh. What kind you been doing? Lookouts for the Red Mike outfit. Been working with Danny Hinkle. He said to see you. Do you work together, you two? Yeah. She's my wife. Oh, is that so? When did you last see Danny? So I'm on the train last night. Just finished a stretch upstate. Told him we're on the loose and he said to see you. I suppose you want a little money, huh? Well, we are kind of flat. Where you staying? We've got a little spot over on the yeah, west write side. Write it down. I'm bad at remembering addresses. Take that. I'll try and throw something your way soon. Thanks. Tell me, sir. Kind of young, ain't they? Oh, red breaks them in young. An innocent looking guy like that can get away with murder. <laughs> a nice looking girl, too. I wonder if they are married. I tell you, I haven't any married couples in the house. Unless some of me rumors get married without telling me. I'm sure this is the place. The fellow wrote it down himself. What kind of a looking couple was they? Oh, just a nice looking couple, you know, a very happy looking. That's them. Hello, looking for us? Yeah, the spa, I mean the boss has got some work for you. Wants to see you right away. Come on, I got a taxi waiting. Uh, you handle the pad and Ratty will give you the signal when to crash. You get the stuff. You two stick with him and I'll meet you after the job's pulled. Is that clear? Sure, we get it. Okay, Marlin Jewelry Store 8.30. And the getaway car, we're waiting around the corner. Now go to it. And be careful. Don't worry, we'll be careful, all right? See you later. Listen, boss, don't go through with it. What do you mean? Them kids ain't from no Red Mike outfit. What are you driving at? I thought I had them spotted when they first come in, and now I'm sure them's the two kids we framed on that Brom jewelry store job. Oh, you're crazy. No, no, boss, I'm telling you, I was at the trial, wasn't I? Hey, Fingy, you remember? The gal said she worked in the Five and Dime, and the boy was a stranger in yeah. town. No, boss, I tell you, this thing ain't kosher. Them kids are up to something. Larry's right, come to think of it. They certainly had a nerve coming in here. The 
second offense that take him out of circulation for 20 years. All the details are in that report, Inspector. Hello. Yes. Mind repeating that? The Marlin jewelry store will be robbed at 8.30 tonight. Never mind who it is, Inspector. You've got the tip off. Take it or leave it. Marlin's jewelry store is to be taken at 8.30 tonight. Sounds funny, but it may be a stool putting somebody on the spot. Did he give his name? You're getting old, Mike. Now, the minute they crash, you two blow. You'll leave them two kids alone with the stuff? Yeah. Leave them alone. Yes? We want to see the inspector. He is busy. But we must see him. It's important. Wait a minute. Chief, there's a young couple out there who wants to see you. Says it's very important. Send him in. Well, what can I do for you? About two years ago, sir, we were arrested for the bronze jewelry store robbery. We were sentenced to two years and got out after 18 months. But we had nothing to do with the robbery. Well, what do you want me to do about it? When we got out, we found it hard to get jobs. Philip finally did get one and was doing all right. The boss found out he'd served a prison term and fired him. And you want me to help him get it back, is that it? No, but we do want to clear our names. That's fine. You take the matter up with the proper authorities, but I'm you sure you... don't understand. We found out who really committed that robbery. It was the sparkler. The sparkler? Well, sit right down and tell me about it. So you were sure they were the two kids we sent up in the Browns job? She was just an East Side girl who worked in a five and dime. Well, gee, boss, they, they certainly looked like them two kids, didn't they, Fingy? I didn't say for sure. Well, I'd have bet it was them. Well, look, since they got this stuff, you ain't gonna let them get away with it, are you? Weren't the police supposed to be there? Yes, they were. What I can't understand is Fingy and Ratty running away like that. Maybe the sparkler found out that we went to the police. I hope not. Ah, don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. Wait around the corner. I thought we'd find you here. It's the idea of you two running out on us. Oh, they got cold feet. Thought they saw a couple of dicks coming. Yeah, they didn't think about us. When you saw us taking a powder, you should have known something was wrong. Sure. You did a clean cut job, kid. No thanks to them. Why didn't you bring the stuff around to my place? Wouldn't that have been smart? Go walking through the city with it. Where is it?
I don't understand. The newspaper said we made a clean getaway. We figured that little story would bring the sparkler himself after the jewels. But you said the police would be at the store to take care of us. They were there, all right. And here's a little present from the Jewelers Association. Thank you. Have you done anything about clearing our records? Certainly. I didn't forget that. Here it is, signed, sealed, and delivered. Thanks. 